Hi, Concordia. This is Pastor Mark Harris at Cross Lutheran Church and School in New Braunfels, Texas, here for you with a message for your chapel service on Thursday, September 23rd. And I understand that this week, your theme is all about mended relationships. And there's a story in God's word that I think helps us see how God mends relationships. So I want to share that story with you today and help you find a little bit of insight from that story as God works to mend relationships in your life too. That story for us is found in Genesis chapter 50. Let's listen together. When Joseph's brothers saw that their father was dead, they said, it may be that Joseph will hate us and pay us back for all the evil that we did to him. So they sent a message to Joseph saying, your father gave this command before he died. Say to Joseph, please forgive the transgression of your brothers and their sin, because they did evil to you. And now, please forgive the transgression of the servants of the God of your father. Joseph wept when they spoke to him. His brothers also came and fell down before him and said, Behold, we are your servants. But Joseph said to them, Do not fear. For am I in the place of God? As for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good, to bring it about that many people should be kept alive as they are today. So do not fear. I will provide for you and your little ones. Thus he comforted them and spoke kindly to them. Do you have a perfect family? Sometimes when we look at pictures or videos that people post online, it looks like everything that is going on in their life is just picture perfect. And maybe your family is pretty good, but there's no such thing as a picture perfect family. Every family has its issues. Mine does, and I'm sure yours does too. And you know what? There's a lot of imperfect families in the Bible as well, because Joseph didn't have a perfect family either. If you know his story from the Bible, you know a lot about those imperfections. And one of the greatest imperfection in Joseph's family happened in his childhood. His brothers were jealous of him. You can read more about that story in the earlier chapters of Genesis. But because his brothers were jealous of him, they threw him in a pit. And when a caravan of traders came through that area, they sold him into slavery. And that caravan took him off into the land of Egypt. And Joseph had a very hard life. But through all of those hardships, Joseph, from each up and down, ended up in a position to help save the whole region. There were years of plenty and then years of famine. But because God was at work in Joseph's life and at work through Joseph's life, God was able to save a great many people. Now, eventually, his brothers find out that Joseph is in a position of prominence, and they become terrified of him, super afraid of what he might do to them now that he, not they, has the powerful position in the community. And so they send a letter to Joseph, and they, for all we know, could have fabricated what Jacob said, you know, Joseph's father and theirs. But what is said in the letter is a, a curious thing, because they say that his father said, your father gave this command before he died, say to Joseph, please forgive the transgression of your brothers and their sin, because they did evil to you. Now, whether or not the father actually said those things, that's the message that Joseph received. And I can't help but wonder if maybe you have been in a similar experience. And I don't mean that you live in ancient Egypt, but maybe you've got some family conflict in your life too, or at the very least, some conflict with some friends in your life. And you have an opportunity to forgive. It's not easy to do that. But there's something that we learn in this story that is very meaningful for us when we find ourselves in that position of needing to mend a relationship, when there is a need for forgiveness in the family. And Joseph learned the key from his experiences with God. And it's recorded for us in God's word that we might learn from Joseph and from God 
as well. It's in Genesis chapter 50, verse 19. And it's when Joseph says, Do not fear, for am I in the place of God? It's a powerful question. And at the heart of that question is something that we need to learn too about forgiveness. It's how God mends relationships. And this is what forgiveness is. It's letting go of control over someone's consequences for what he or she has done. And when we do that, by God's power and by his grace at work within us, we acknowledge that God alone should hold that place of authority. And you know something? Forgiveness ultimately isn't about what you do or I do or about what anyone else does. It's actually about what God does and about what God has done. You can see over my shoulder that there is a cross that hangs in our sanctuary here in New Braunfels. Most of the places where Christians gather to worship, there is a cross probably a lot like that one. And you know what? When we look at that cross, we see what God has done with sin and how he brings about forgiveness. Joseph's question was, am I in the place of God? And of course, the answer is no, Joseph, you're not. And when we ask that question in our heart of hearts, the honest answer is the same. We're not in the place of God. But do you know who is? God is. And his son, Jesus Christ, is God. And being in the place of God, the one who rightly had the authority to do something about the sins that have been done, about Joseph's sins, about his brother's sins, about your sins, about my sins, about the sins of every single person who has ever lived and ever will live. Instead of holding that grudge and holding our sins against us, he did something about them. He gave his life to solve the problem of sin, to mend the relationship that was fractured between us and our Heavenly Father, to bring forgiveness into the family of God's people. By dying on the cross and rising again, Jesus has mended relationships, divine relationships and human relationships too. Whatever your need for mending or forgiveness in your life right now, my encouragement to you today is that you would look to Jesus and see in him how God does what only he can do in bringing about forgiveness for you, for your family, for your relationships, and for all people. May God bless you as you go through your day this day and as you look to him.